Well, guys, looks like I got to get started back on this 4.7 Chrysler engine for the 03 Dodge Ram 1500 pickup truck I bought that wouldn't run. And now I had to buy a motor, but I also had to buy a motor and change the tone wheel. So that's where I'm at right now. Bed plate off. Now, what, what's neat about these motors is they have a solid bed plate that goes down on there. Instead of just main bearing caps, it's got this bed plate. And what's horrible about this motor is it's got this bed plate. So if there's any speck of anything in here, you know, there's all this more surface area to make a space between your bearings and have you blow the thing up. So this got to get super clean. I'm intending on making some of you guys laugh today and some of you guys cry. Because this is what I'm using for cleanup. Vodka. It says something about not using petroleum-based products on the timing cover and stuff like that. So we're going to go with a little bit of alcohol. I think that's the cheapest alcohol I could find. I sure as heck wouldn't drink that stuff. Yeah, we'll see by the engine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use it all up on the engine. <laughs> anyway, there it is. So that's what I'm going to do now. i got to get this super clean. I had, I've got this pretty clean, and it's been sitting here for... How long has it been sitting here, Con? A month? Month. month. Sitting here for a month. He keeps rubbing it in. Oh, what are you going to get that truck out of there? I have no room to rub it in anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, but you do anyway. This is what I'm going to clean up over here. The bed plate. I keep wanting to call it a bed pan, but it's a bed plate. So I'm going to work on cleaning that up. Alright, tell you something I'm discovering here. I got I got rust here. And it's it's raised. And this would match over here. If I'm looking at this right, this is the area it came from. So probably when it's originally made, the sealer didn't go around here, so this got moisture in there and rusted between the two layers. Now I gotta have to clean that up. I'm gonna have to sand that off, I guess. Um, or well it won't lay flat. So I guess I'll work on that too. I'm thinking that alcohol is not the right thing to do. As soon as you put it on there, the water comes out of it. <laughs> because it's so cold, I think. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. Anyway, I take these bearing shells out because there's oil behind them and I don't want any chance of them spinning so I'm going to wipe these out then drop them right back in but I want to get rid of the oil it looks like it's not just coming off so I'm going to give a little spritz of brake clean clean that up get it off there Well, it looks like I got this thing cleaned up finally, um, and that's good stuff. I got it all cleaned up, cleaned up behind the bearings, everywhere. Connor's banging on his charger some more. Okay, so the next thing is, I wonder if I can use this uh, anaerobic sealant on the, when I made these two pieces together, the whole bed plate onto the block. I told you to use a Mopar special sealant, but I know there's other brands that, uh, that do it too, but I'm going to research it a little bit. So I cleaned up this bed plate and then I put some Clevite bearing guard on the bearings. And I threw some of that on the main journals as well. And uh, 
I also put down the sealant. It's an anaerobic sealant. It doesn't seal up until it gets hot and anaerobic. So that's that blue there, and I went around all the little things. Hopefully I got that right because I didn't have a diagram, but went all the way up to the, to the main so and all the way up to the front edge there. So I'm going to drop that thing on there now, see what happens. Break down on. I'm going to have to torque these in first. Failed mission. Got to pull this back off. That ain't going to work. All right. No harm done. Got to torque on the uh, tone wheel bolts. All right. Going to try this again. So I put sealant on the bolts, the three bolts for the tone wheel, and I torqued it to 12 foot-pounds. I'm going to drop that bed plate on there. No, Connor. It's not a bed pan. Bed pan. Bed plate. The bed plate, not a bed pan. Hey, now it's a matter of putting those bolts in there. A crusty little diagram right here. Shows me all the locations of the different bolts. Drop these bolts in here. If I screw this up, I'd have to buy all new bolts again because they're one torque at once and throw them away. Oh, one thing I'm forgetting, I gotta put oil on these. So, gotta pull them all up and oil them up. Tighten these down to get the bed plate set on the dowel pin. Evenly, all the way around. Just the outside ones. And I'm not going to go crazy torquing them down or nothing yet. Until I get the bed pan down where it's bed pan. <laughs> the bed plate down. Oh, Connor's got me calling it a bed pan. I don't know where these all go. Oh, I'm fighting. All right, this thing's a real beauty. So, got A bolts, you got numerical bolts, and then we got a with numerical, and then you have, uh, yeah, A with numerical bolts. <laughs> yeah, three, three different kinds of bolts. So the first, the A through L is 40 foot-pounds. I'm going to do them right now. So A is this guy. Well, I'm going to step torque it anyway. I'm going to go to 20 pounds. That's that one. And this one is B. Yep, that's B. It's outside of the rail. It's outside of the oil pan rail. That's that one. C, C is this one. All right, I'm gonna take it right up to the 40 pounds it wants to be at. And just do that all again. That was kind of like a practice run. That's it, 40 foot pounds. There you have it. So I got the first set torqued. I got to torque one through ten. One through ten are the actual, the main ones. So got to go to a 15 millimeter ramp for that. And that says 25 inch pounds plus 90. 25 inch pounds? That's like nothing. Wow. I got a reluctant assistant from the studio audience. Did you do uh He's gonna help me torque this. Did you do the 25 inch pounds is like nothing. It, it's silly, really. Two huh? foot pounds. It's like two foot pounds. Which is nuts. 
So that one, this one's one. I'm trying to figure out how to here, how to set this gizmo up. So you gotta just hold that for me? Yeah. That's 90. 90. And then two is over here. Oh, I just moved it. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Let me let me uh, let me make sure I got it right with the inch pound thing. Yeah, that's right. The inch pound thing is silly because there's there it's it's like basically nothing. I just I just backed it off by touching it. So <laughs> not having a good feeling about this. That's probably the biggest typo in Chrysler history. <laughs> That's a typo. Go ahead. Oh boy. We're almost there. 90. So how many foot pounds do you think that is? I don't know. We're going to find out with a, with a beam. Okay. That's two. Three is this studded guy right here. I can't math, so I'm going to zero it every time. You're going to go right to zero? That works good. 90, they're really not very tight. Four is this guy right here. Oh you can't math. You can math. Oh, you got it? Yep. <clears throat> Does it even matter? It should just say do finger tight. Yeah, just go tight. Now it's this guy here. Yep. You there? Sure. Go 91. Okay, and that was five. This guy's six. I like this little doodad. Boy, that one don't feel tight at all. How are these yield bolts? It's not. How is it yielding? There's nothing yielding. I gotta reuse all these bolts. They're not even tight. This is scary. <laughs> six. Seven is to the front on this side. That was tight. Well, at least it's consistent. Seven, uh, eight is this guy is here. Is this the oil filter? Yeah. Wow. Don't distract me. It's eight. a lawnmower. It's part of the keys to the success of this engine. Eight, <clears throat> nine, and ten. You already knew it was going to be back here, didn't you? Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. 90. <laughs> Equipment glitch here. 90 and... 90. Woo-wee! Oh, lost my doohickey. I like this gizmo. I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but it's... It's a dial with a 360 degree dial, so when you do have to do a 90 degree turn, you can do it exact. I've always just winged it in the past, but with varying results. But that's uh, a little bit more official. All right, we're the guys with the poor man crank polisher. We're also the guys with the beam torque wrench that we're going to find out what the foot pounds is on 25 inch pounds and then a quarter turn, which is 90 degrees. Tell me when it yields. Okay. Got to keep that balance right. 20, 30. Yep. It's starting to move a little. 40. I'd say it's moved. 45. Bring them all to 45. I'm going to take them all to 45. I want them. Set it with the clicker. Go to 45. Boom, boom, boom. See what they do. Yep. Consistent. Click, click, click. They don't do much much they're not gonna. They're not gonna do much. They're not gonna do anything. That's the problem with a click. But at least you know what, torque Connor. I won't. Yeah, hey, we could talk about that real quick. What's that? The benefits of a beam style torque wrench over a clicker. What are they? If you are doing, they cost a lot less. <laughs> if you're doing a working oh, there you your are. way up to a big torque, right? And then you say you get a torque really close to what the final torque is. You can't, the breakaway power on a click style torque wrench is going to make it click before you actually get your torque reading. No, it isn't. Don't you set it. it here and that's what it does. They calibrate them and they're good. No. 
breakaway. Breakaway. Breakaway torque is going to make that click before it would actually, it's going to click. Well, let's put your theory to use and see if that spins. Okay. It didn't do nothing. No, it just broke the torque wrench away. It, yeah, it didn't move it as much as this. Three, four, nothing moved. Oh. Five. What was the weak one? This one. <laughs> Good thing you did that. That one was weak. Six. Yep. Where'd seven go? Seven's up front, right? Seven's up front here. Yep. Eight, nine, ten. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well, they click real easy. <clears throat> Why don't we set up an experiment so I can prove you wrong? <laughs> Tell you what, weld the two torque wrenches together yeah, we'll and we'll see which one works. See, see which one where it clicks off at. Want to prove me wrong? I don't even know if you're proving me anything because I really don't have an opinion on it too much. I, I just figure they both came up about about the same. I'm going to weld some more. You think about it. Well, that's all I've been doing is thinking about it. All right, so I don't know if I'm going to sleep good tonight over this or not, but I'm going to torque these other bolts down and take it from there, I guess. Okay, last bolts, A1 through A6, and they get uh, they get 20 foot-pounds, which, jeez, it's a lot more than, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. No, it's less. We, if, we if, I, if I had my way, I would torque these down to about 70 foot-pounds, yeah. the size of that bolt. No, they're soft. I, I bet you that's the right torque value for that bolt. Okay. What are they? They're not much more than a 3 8 bolt. They're uh, metric, but equivalency. Here. They're metric, and they're they're 12 millimeter, I think, Connor. If I were to spitball a guess at you. So let's call it 7 sixteenths. And it's probably a grade 5 bolt, because uh -huh. it's a torque to yield. I don't know. So, yeah, according to the book for the for the bulldozer. The bulldozer that, book? According to that chart, 45 foot pounds is about it. Which we do like that chart. Yeah. So, A1 is this guy. All right, well, I got that torqued. I'm going to torque down the rod bolts while I'm at it because get that over with. Oh, here we go. 20 foot-pounds and then a 90. Wait a minute. Oh. What did you do wrong? Nothing. So these all get, all the connecting rod bolts get 20 foot pounds and then another 90 degree turn. So. So we got the whole thing torqued right down. That's good stuff. So, take it from there. So I just got to finish putting the motor back together and uh, put it in the truck. We'll see how that all goes. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.